the big V12 Grand Tourer. It's a type of car we all can't help but have a soft spot for, and the reality that they might not be around for much longer makes the appeal stronger still. Thing is, if you like making use of your left leg and arm to swap cogs yourself, the vast majority of these cars have left that side of your body sadly devoid of exercise for the last 20 years. Well, our friends at Car Iconics have a couple of solutions for us to choose from in the shape of an Aston Martin Vanquish S and Ferrari 575M, both with three pedals and some sort of stick between the seats. Dan from Car Iconics hopped in the Aston to lead the way to some of the best roads in the area, so I guess that means the Ferrari's up first. So the manual Ferrari 575. Let me get this out of the way first. I didn't actually know they made a manual 575. So few people chose it because of the newfangled paddle hype at the time after the manual only 550 that only 10% of 575s were chosen with manual and just 69 UK right hand drive cars. So it's a rare beast and the manuals right now are fetching around double the F1s on the used market. The 575 was an evolution of the 550. There's 30 horsepower more from the V12, but a lot of little mechanical improvements like adaptive suspension, bigger brakes, even improved weight distribution. This one has the Furano handle impact, so things should be better still with better spring rates. So we've got 508 brake horsepower, 588 newton meters of torque from a 5.7 litre V12. It's a heavy thing, 1,853 kilos, but once it gets moving, it'll carry on all the way to 202 miles an hour. This is basically one of the best 575s you could ever hope to find. It's got 9,000 miles on the clock, maybe a bit of a shame it hasn't been driven more, but it has the full carbon fibre interior pack as well, so the open gate gear lever has a carbon knob on the top, and it feels so nice to use. It's one of those things that takes a bit of getting used to. I keep missing third gear but it's so rewarding, the noise it makes when it goes in. And you have to be careful, it's quite a lively thing. You've got to show it some respect. Driving a big V12, heel and toe in the downshifts, changing up yourself, it, oh, it's mega. There's not a great deal of noise there, as you can probably hear. But if you put an exhaust on one of these, Sounds like an Enzo. Can you imagine that? The steering wriggles around in your hands. It's alive. It doesn't feel its weight at all. You've definitely got to be gentle on the way out of corners. But you turn in, despite the massive engine up there, it's so sharp. It's not a great deal of body roll, and on a road like this, it deals with all the imperfections quite well tell it's a Grand Tour. It does move around a lot and one of the things it does do which is quite funny is when you put your foot down the whole front of the car just lifts. What I take from this is it might be a Grand Tourer but wow it's a sports car as well and the gearbox makes it. the Vanquish S. Everybody loves this car, don't they? For me, it's been cool ever since it started in that ice chase scene in Die Another Day. And just how the 575 is to the 550, the Vanquish S is an enhanced version of the original Vanquish. Power was up from 460 brake horsepower to 520. The suspension was stiffened, the brakes were beefed up, and the styling was tweaked a little bit as well to bring it a little more up to date. But for all its life, the Vanquish had one big problem a pretty woeful paddle shift gearbox. Now you're probably thinking, well, what, what are you doing with your left arm then? That's not a paddle shift. And you're right. For a nice 17,000 pounds, Aston Martin Works will take any Vanquish, ditch the paddle shift gearbox and give you three pedals and a six speed manual. Or you can buy one that's already been done like this one. So big question, what is a Vanquish S like as petrol heads always wanted it to be? Let's talk stats first. 5.9 litre V12, 
520 brake horsepower, 576 newton meters, top speed 200 miles an hour on the nose, so we're splitting hairs between the two. And overall, these are two big V12 manual Grand Tourers from the early 2000s with seemingly nothing to choose between them on paper. But in reality, they are so different. The first thing you notice as soon as you get in, this is not as nice a place to be as the Ferrari. That, that interior feels so special with all the, the stitching and the carbon. This is not Aston Martin's finest hour inside. But the second thing you notice is the noise. <laughs> While the Ferrari is pretty quiet, this V12. <laughs> oh, it sounds amazing. I've always loved this V12 engine in Aston's and it is just as nice in here. This is modern day fast as well. It's not as fast as the Ferrari. The Ferrari feels really quick, but this has plenty of poke. Oh, and the noise you get all through the rev ranges absolutely awesome i would have to have an exhaust on the ferrari now dan from car iconics actually said the chassis on this is better than the ferrari so let's find out i don't like the steering quite so much it's not as quick off center as the ferrari i don't think you get as much feel from it but he's right that over these bumpy roads it really takes the undulations into its stride i'd say it's not so much of a sports car but what it is is a great car for covering ground a great Grand Tourer, that's what it's supposed to be. Something you could cover loads of distance in, but then just tear across the Alps. Now the manual box is not as satisfying as that open gate shifter. I, oh, that's amazing in the Ferrari. To be honest with you, it is not the best manual gearbox, but it's just nice to have it. I've been in one of these with a paddle shift box, and if I had one, I would have to have this done. It feels like such a brute of a car. Now, in some ways, you can tell it wasn't meant to have a manual box. Like when your foot's down on the clutch and you turn the wheel, you can, you can actually feel the steering column hitting your foot. So it has its quirks, but it has character. The twin turbo V12 in the new Astons like the DB11 is great. For a turbocharged engine, it, is, it sounds amazing, but this is something properly special. The throttle mapping can be a little jerky on part throttle, so it can catch you off guard. I thought it would actually be the opposite where the Ferrari was the more peaky power delivery. But the Ferrari has so much torque. This actually builds all the way to the red line. And it sounds great when it gets there. You definitely have to turn the wheel more. And the thing with both cars, you don't just jump into them and fly straight away. It takes you a while to get used to the box got to be careful with both of them because traction is not the strong point they're both rewarding when you build the confidence in them and neither of them feel anything close to 1800 kilos definitely moves around less than the ferrari God, it feels like a muscle car with that engine very similar stats very different cars Overall, the 575 feels special, even without screaming in your ears. The engine's like a silent assassin detonating a nuclear bomb. It goes and performs like a car of today, with unrelenting acceleration and superb steering, but it challenges you as a driver, like a good old-fashioned GT should. I realised after experiencing the more tied-down Vanquish just how bouncy the 575 is, but still, as soon as I'd finished driving it, I said to videographer Dan that if I had a small collection, I would absolutely have a manual 575. Taking the near £100,000 premium over the Aston out of the equation, I've just laid down my slight preference for the Ferrari because its Italian charm tugs on my heartstrings that little bit more. Sadly, the 575 isn't for sale. But if the big manual V12 thing sounds like a bit of you, this very Vanquish S is available at Car Iconics with less than 20,000 miles on the clock for a five or under £140,000. It's a fairly unique proposition, and in years to come, something tells me they'll be going for rather more than that. Whilst they both have their advantages and drawbacks, they both share the same character and three-pedal experience you simply cannot get from a modern-day Grand Tourer. No auto blip, no five-stage traction control, no four-wheel steering, 
just you, three pedals, a stick, and a whacking great atmospheric V12. What more could you want?